Hi there. Yeah, I'm Shilpa Suntankar. Um, and thank you. Thank you so much, Passionistas, for putting this great summit together um, full of inspiring women and non-binary folks and having me on board with this a very inspiring group of ladies. Um, I'm, I'm uh, in, in admiration of you other two um, and really grateful to be here to, to have this conversation with you guys. Um, so yeah, I'm a filmmaker, writer, director, producer um, with a production company of my own here in Portland, Oregon called Pushcart Productions. Um, and I've worked on a lot of different kinds of production, uh, feature films, commercials, a lot of animation here in Portland. Uh, and yes, I do make my own films. I have um, several award-winning short films. Uh, right now, I actually have a short film I created with Montevilla Jazz that's sort of um, a multicultural dance extravaganza in combination with jazz um, that I'll probably be looking to get into uh, the uh, next festival circuit this next coming year. Um, and I also have a, a number of award-winning feature scripts. Um, I'm also developing my first feature uh, which will be one of two films, one of which is a, uh, a cross-cultural thriller on, that takes place on the U.S.-Mexico border. And um, the other one is a little, a little more dramatic with some thriller elements. Uh, it's about uh, two Indian-American sisters growing up in middle America. And um, as you can tell from my details on my own projects thus far, I'm a filmmaker who is really driven by stories about, like, uh, as, as Kara said, different cultures and coexistence. Um, that cross-cultural experience um, shouldn't be surprising, uh, being that Indian American growing up in cowboy country. Um, and that's just kind of been the story of my life, living across the bridge uh, uh, between cultures and trying to be, you know, being a woman, trying to seek a, a foothold in a mainly male-dominated industry. So when I think of the power of media, uh, I think of that power as the ability to amplify individual voices, make bigger, um, make a bigger platform out of someone's vision. As media makers, I think we have a unique capability to make sight and sound creations uh, that ultimately generate emotions in people. We make people feel. Uh, I think it's a unique privilege because if we can make people feel, then we can make, make people act on those feelings or have them comprehend how those feelings are occurring in others. To me, that is power. That's powerful. It's the ability to move people to action. Um, the issue, um, as we all know, I'm preaching to the choir here, is currently that majority voice that holds the power today is still that of the Caucasian male. So it is that perspective who is getting people to feel driving the cultural mindset. And that is because for the most part, they still own all the creative. Uh, women fall under 20% of all film directors in the US, which is down from 2020. Uh, women directors uh, of color make up only about 2% or something like that. Um, commercial directing is more disheartening at around 7% women. Um, and even more abysmal uh, is uh, in, in agencies where even though um, women pretty much still control a whopping 80% of consumer spending, they only make up about 3% of creative directors in the agencies <laughs> developing the marketing for them. Uh, and the percentages range around 10% or less uh, of that number for various uh, people of color demographics. So um, I think we've all kind of gotten pieces of this over the last couple of years as revelations have been coming to us in the zeitgeist. Uh, but um, here's a little of how, uh, about my story, I think, and, and how I came to figuring out where I fit in all of this over the course of my life. So I grew up in small town Colorado in an Indian American household. Um, my mother, being a doctor, was kind of the main breadwinner. And uh, if you know anything about Indian culture, uh, you know it's a big movie culture. So uh, it has been and still is, I believe, um, the, the biggest producer of movies on the planet in terms of number of movies per year. So you get the idea. I had themes of strong women and movies in my life pretty much from the get-go. In my own personal work, for a long time, I really focused on great stories, 
just making really compelling um, stories that are well crafted. Uh, more recently, uh, a certain sig significant event happened that I think we all know about that sort of changed my mind about um, how I'm creating and how I'm thinking of those things um, and exactly how I should be using that talent. Uh, and that event was, um, we all know it and love it, the event uh, of President Trump getting elected in 2016. Um, the reason why this affected me so much wasn't simply the event itself of half the country choosing him and his policies and his leadership, um, whatever you might think of how valid the election results were. Uh, what affected me so much was the immediately hateful celebrations that occurred across our country, across social media, graffiti on minority businesses, churches, religious structures, on schools, the N word, which I can't, still can't bring myself to say, frankly, um, suddenly appeared everywhere again. Um, not that it ever disappeared, but now it was everywhere. People in blackface across social media, slurs telling us people of color to go home, uh, which I, to which I could only ever ask, where is that, Fort Collins, Colorado? Because uh, that's where I'm from. <laughs> so people telling us, you know, Trump was going to come in and clean us out of this country. So, uh, and you know, over the course of the next year uh, after that happened, you know, no less than three instances happened in which uh, that occurred in which South Asians were shot. So that left me and my family in a place of um, being pretty fearful. Um, it was as if half the country had erupted in a roar against the entire minority half of us. For me, the cat was out of the bag. I was the them and not the us in this country um, for a long time, I was afraid to live in my own country. For all I knew, it was entirely possible that half the country didn't think I or my family should even be here. My mother had probably delivered more American babies into this planet with her own hands than most Americans see in a lifetime. So the idea that someone might think she didn't belong here at all was very scary to me indeed. So that's when I knew that not enough people knew or were seeing our perspective. There wasn't enough out there to tell half the country, apparently, who we were and what we were feeling and what we were doing. And that's when I tr truly started comprehending the importance of my voice, my experience, and my ability to do my job in making people feel so my last short film, Working Lunch, which Kara noted, thank you, um, was uh, about a couple of people, people of color, Republican and Democrat, going to lunch at an Indian restaurant on any regular work day after um, the 2016 election and finding that it has been sprayed with hate graffiti. So over the course of lunch, they have to connect and overcome their differences and decide ultimately that they're going to come together and remove the graffiti, remove the graffiti together. So um, that was where I started finding through the fear, my perspective and that want, that genuine want to relay the message that we need to get together across, uh, across the aisle, across lines and stand together um, against hate. I mean, no matter which way we voted, we should at least all draw the line there, right? Ultimately, it received good reception, played at, uh, played at festivals, um, received a grant. So I was very grateful that, um, you know, the message was received. Um, but overall, I think in my story, that's where I am now. Um, I'm trying to work toward making my voice truer making sure my perspective is part of the content that's out there, that's in front of people, that's part of the zeitgeist. And I feel like that's where we're truly meant to be as, uh, and what we're truly meant to do as the army of us minority and underrepresented artists. All of us can keep adding our perspective to what people are seeing. If we keep owning our creative, owning those directing roles, making people feel 
then over time, millimeter by millimeter, inch by inch, maybe we can start to move the needle and uh, you know, start to move things in the right direction in our cultural mindset uh, to see us as the half of the country that we are as minorities. <laughs> um, and uh, I think it's obviously going to make us a bare, better country on the whole.